Hey guys, it's Beverage back again with another video after a long vacation since, uh, had some school stuff come up and I, uh, just generally was having some, uh, motivation issues, let's just call them that, cause, uh, let's just put it flat, I, uh, was kinda bored, didn't really wanna make videos, and, uh, I, it was always something I did as a extra backup hobby, so I just dropped it because I had other more important things to attend to, but, um, but now my schedule is free again, so I should be able to get back to making videos and uh, probably going to be focusing on For Honor, Rainbow Six, and Titanfall since those are a bunch of the games I've been playing lately and really enjoying. Took a little survey over on my iFunny because uh, it's the only place I really have followers. Got 1,500 over there, so I mean, better opinion than just asking my Twitter or something. I mean, that's dead as hell. I mean... 30 sub followers or something. I mean, God, that's pathetic. Holy shit. Um, other than that, I mean, I'm glad I'm back and I'm gonna be able to make videos again. So, uh, yeah. Let's just get right into our video. So, uh, this is the Outbreak Prime review I've been promising. So, yeah, let's just get right into it. <laughs> Alright, so this is Outbreak Prime, the Pulse Rifle from the Wrath of the Machine Raid Exotic Quest, and uh, let's just go over the perks really quick to know what it's got. The Corruption Spreads. Enemies that take repeated hits from this weapon spawn SIVA nanites that attack other enemies. Fall and take extra damage. Smooth Ballistics. Increased recoil, boost to range. Accurized Ballistics. More range and impact, increased recoil. Smart Drift Control. Predictable and controllable recoil, penalty to range. Outlaw. Precision kills with this weapon dramatically increase reload speed. Lightweight. When held, this weapon grants plus two character agility. Hand loaded. This weapon is effective at an extended range. Fitted stock. Increases weapon stability. And virulence. Precision kills release a SIVA nanite swarm that attacks other enemies. Outbreak Prime is really a great gun, so it's one of the hardest to get in the game currently since you have to go through the entire quest line doing the raid perfectly with the monitors and beating Axis and all of this, etc. And then once you've done that, you have to have one of each class, the Warlock, the Titan, and the Hunter, and you all have to team up while having the quest and solve these puzzles, do these missions and stuff do the nightfall and then you have to solve those puzzles I was talking about like it's sort of like the um, sleeper simulant stuff if you uh, remember that from Taken King you have to solve the puzzles except each class has a different one and you can't progress until each class has fulfilled theirs within the fire team and then you can all click the continue button and pick up the next step of the quest and once you've done that there will be some more menial tasks in between, like getting kills with a pulse rifle or some something like that. And then once you do that, you uh, have to solve another set, which is more complex with uh, a higher outcome number and such. And once you solve that, you have to go kill three bosses in the raid. The point of it was to do the entire raid, so you get one chip from Vosik, one chip from the wall, and one chip from Axis. But really, you can cheat the quest by just doing, like, Three walls, three axes, uh, three Vosik, two walls, one Vosik, like really any combination, as long as you kill them three times, they will drop the chip every time. So you can cheat the quest that way, but being one of the hardest things to do, after doing that, it does the same hard little code thing, but this time instead of being a set code, each class has a randomized code just randomized completely. You can put it into this calculator that some genius on Reddit made. I'll throw that down in the description. Like, praise that guy, he saved my life. But, um, that was really hard to do, since they gave it a completely independent number from every other person, and it's just completely random, which is, uh, I thought that was a really cool, nice move of Bungie to do something a little bit different, a little bit, uh, harder, craftier, sneakier, how they hit it like that. I thought it was a pretty good, uh, rat hunt, and I personally liked it. It was uh, really exciting at the time, and I personally really enjoyed the gun. As for how the gun performs, it wasn't hit by the nerfs or the buffs this time around with the 2.5 patch, since it isn't the highest rate of fire like a Grass Mamalic, but it isn't a low rate of fire like a, for example, uh, the Nerwin's Mercy or something like that. 
um, it isn't that low, so it's just in that perfect little spot. Like, it's mid to high. It's not quite highest, so it didn't get hit by the uh, nerfs. So, it still functions just as it would normally. And I think he got an in-air accuracy buff, so even better in air now for people like hunters who like to jump around and stuff. So that easily, tiny, tiny little buff right there. Pretty nice if you ask me, but I mean... Are you really going to be shooting that much in air? No, but will it come in handy sometime? I'm sure it will, but as for that, I, I'm i happy with that. I can't complain about getting uh, more in-air accuracy. As for how the gun functions by itself, it's a really nice gun. It's the Hawk Saw Soros PDX-45 archetype, so it's already really stable, has good range, good recoil, and um, you can set it up so it gets even better recoil with the hand-laid stock. So you have less recoil and the smart drift control that gives you more stability. So you practically get a bunch of stability. So it just becomes a laser beam. But um, you can get more range instead if you'd like that more. So you can stack for that with the uh, accurized ballistics. And you can use hand loaded if you want more range. So you can totally do that. That's definitely a thing you can do. <clears throat> As for um, anything else to do with the gun, that, that's really the only two ways you can run it max stability or max range i definitely say that um you're not going to need the range so go for the stability all the way anyways so yeah the gun works really well and um i'm going to show you a rare clip right now um so you can get kills with those little that spawn it's really rare and since they don't do too much damage like they'll seem really really useful in the raid and stuff but that's because they do like times four or five damage to fall in so i mean they, they seem a lot, lot better in PvP, or in, in uh, PvE versus PvP. So I had a rare chance where I think I just found a guy, headshot killed him, and then uh, one of his allies ran next to him, and he must have been really low health because I got a random kill out of nowhere and it made it a double, so that was pretty cool, but I can show you that clip right now. Double down. So there you go, you've seen that. Um, the sights, I really like the sights, they're nice and clean, and they have a nice little pop-up so that you know when your, uh, nanites are ready, it'll be swarming with, the, like, the little red nanites around the bottom. Once you've used it, those nanites will go away, and then they'll pop back up once they're ready again, and there'll be little red lights on either side of the scope when it's, uh, aimed in. The two left and right vertices will have little red glowing dots on them, so that'll look really nice, and, uh, it's a nice little pop-up. The overall design of the gun, I think it's really nice. They've kept to the triangular geometric design of the vaults and Rasputin, you know, that sort of stuff. I think it fits really well in with that, with the sleeper simulant vibe. I think we could get more weapons like this, that would be really cool, even if they aren't Seaver related. I think I'd, I'd definitely be down for more of these lightweight looking, built for war weapons that are really cool looking. Other than that, I don't think there's too much wrong with the weapon, like there's literally no weaknesses other than it's a pulse rifle, so you just gotta mash the trigger more instead of, you know, not. The outlaw perk really helps out with the reload speed, virulence is the headshot kills, so that's basically like a slightly nerfed yet slightly buffed firefly since it can like seek out the bodies, but like it'll also do less damage. So I mean, it's like guaranteed damage if they're close but it's gonna be next to no damage, like less than half a shield we're talking. So it's really not that much. As for the uh, intrinsic perk, that will only trigger if you get four body shots. So the only time you're really gonna see that trigger in Crucible is on, on supers, and they also fixed a bug in the recent patch, the 2.5.02, .02, so that it will not trigger against Wards of Dawn. So if you're trying to spam it to hurt the guy inside, won't work, that won't work anymore. But it'll work on people, for example, like uh, Flamesinger Warlocks with a uh, shield, their uh, hand shield, the uh, flame shield, Defender Titans with their uh, no backup plan shield, um, it'll work on supers, obviously, like uh, Radiance with the Radiant Skin, or um, Sunbreaker, Blade Dancer, work on all those ones that give you more health during your super, so if you can land four shots, uh, four bursts quickly enough, that'll proc those, even though they'll do next to nothing. They'll try to help, but really, the uh, nanites, they're, they're not gonna help. But 
Other than that, the gun is really good. I cannot appreciate it any more than any of the other raid weapons. It was quite a chore to find. I really enjoyed it, though, since uh, Bungie has been ramping up the raid game. So, yeah, I, overall, that's a solid 10 out of 10 gun. So, I don't know what to say. I've really enjoyed reviewing this gun, and I'm glad I'm finally back to doing YouTube. So, you can expect more videos, probably on Rainbow Six and For Honor. Probably some Titanfall 2 also. I took a survey and a lot of people wanted uh, Titanfall 2. So we're going to be seeing Titanfall 2 soon. I finished my PC setup and I'm going to be getting an Elgato soon. So I'll be able to start recording uh, PC gameplay as well. So I'll have that stuff coming up. And um, other than that, I don't really think there's anything else I can talk about in this video that isn't too off topic. So thanks for watching guys i really appreciate you guys for sticking around and uh supporting me and what i do so if you like the video drop a like if you didn't drop a like anyway and uh subscribe hit that notification bell and uh peace out